universe is so massive, it is estimated that the observable universe is 93 billion light years across and everything that has been explored comes under it. It is not possible for our human mind to comprehend the vastness of the universe. And how much of it have we explored? Only 6% of presently observable galaxies remain reachable. 94% already lie beyond our reach. Even if you travel at the speed of light, you never catch up to these galaxies. So now the most obvious question, if the universe is so indefinitely vast, why bother exploring space? There are so many problems all across planet Earth that harm and threaten humanity. Problems like poverty, hunger, pollution, war, climate change, global pandemics and many more are not going to be solved by themselves. They are to be solved by humanity's collective actions, of course requiring huge amount of resources. Despite having these many problems, investing billions of dollars into space exploration may seem pointless. Then what is the importance of exploring universe while we have so many problems here on Earth? Curiosity, simply put, is the innate human desire to explore and find out more about things around us. Curiosity has given the humans the drive to discover the natural world since the dawn of humanity. Our ability to understand the world and finding simple solutions to different problems has made our civilization flourish. We explore because we are curious about things and nature. So should you explore anything just because you're curious? Most of the times, we humans look up to the cases where we may find its applications in our daily lives. When we spend so much resources and efforts exploring anything, we expect something that benefit humanity. And not just simply because we are curious. Here comes the question from many people. Why spend time and resources exploring universe if there are no practical applications in our daily lives? That's a good question to ask and it is true that simply gaining knowledge for the sake of knowledge isn't going to help humanity. Here the main problem is our inability to anticipate practical applications. Like we know why it is so important to study atmospheric sciences because we need to understand and tackle the problem of climate change. But when it comes to exploring universe, it isn't very much obvious as to how it is benefiting humanity. And now it is relevant to ask what is the importance of studying and making extensive research about the universe. On 15 July 1969, many poor African American families marched during the launch of Saturn V rocket, which was about to send the first men to the moon. These groups were led by Ralph David Abernathy, head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. He was carrying a sign that said, $12 a day to feed an astronaut, we could feed a starving child for $8. He told to the rally, we may go on from this day to Mars and to Jupiter and even to the heavens beyond. But as long as racism, poverty, hunger and war prevail on earth, we as a civilized nation have failed. This protest just makes sense as it happened during the times where one-fifth of the nation lacked inadequate food, clothing, shelter and medical care. The United States spent $25.4 billion on Project Apollo between 1960 and 1973. In today's money, it's worth more than $180 billion. Tom Paine, the administrator of NASA, walked out to meet the demonstrators and replied that if he could solve the problems of poverty by not pushing the button to launch men to the moon tomorrow, then we would not push that button. He added that NASA's technical advances were child's play compared to the tremendously difficult human problems that concern the SCLC. He offered a hope that indeed NASA might contribute to addressing these problems. The unorganized meeting ended well, but the fact is, more than half of the nation during that time thought that the Apollo program was worthless. But as time passed, people began to realize that it was indeed fruitful. Apollo program led to a tremendous number of spin-off technologies, whose economic benefit far exceeded the total amount invested in it. A huge number of everyday technologies that better our lives came as a direct result of that investment. From water purification to integrated circuits and helping to accelerate the silicon chip revolution, despite our inability to predict them, humanity is still benefiting from it. 
CERN's Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. Particle accelerators allow physicists to study subatomic particles by speeding them up in powerful magnetic fields and then tracing the interactions that result from collisions. We are doing this to answer some of the mysteries of the universe. Physicists think that everything began around 13.7 billion years ago with a start called Big Bang. Back then, the universe was incredibly hot and dense. Instantly, it cooled down and a variety of processes began to take place that have given us everything we see today. To shed some light onto those things we don't yet understand about our universe, it helps to look back to that first dramatic moment. The high energy collisions produced by the collider will recreate the conditions that govern the movements just after the Big Bang. Physicists hope that the collisions will create new particles. It has only formed Higgs boson particles and no other new particles. For many years, people criticized it for not discovering any new particles until July 5th, 2022. The collider discovered three new exotic particles, the three never before seen particles. But even if the Large Hadron Collider were to never make any new discovery, it would be untruthful to claim that it hasn't benefited humanity. The World Wide Web was itself invented at CERN 33 years ago. Every time we push the frontiers of particle physics to new heights, we develop an incredible number of practical advances, from detectors to high-field electromagnets to advances in data handling and information sharing, we as a humanity has been greatly benefited from these experiments. When we had discovered electromagnetism, we had no way of knowing it would lead to the radio, the television and the entire telecommunications industry. When we discovered quantum mechanics, we had no idea it would lead to the transistor, the electronic computer and all of modern electronics. When we discovered nuclear physics and tried to unlock the secrets of atom, we couldn't have anticipated that it would lead to medical anti-cancer therapies as well as diagnostic tools like MRI machines. The rewards of basic research at the frontiers of science might be difficult to predict, but they will be significant. Now there's a different side to the question. If we did stop funding basic research and instead use these resources towards the immediate problems we assumed more important, would that be sufficient to solve those problems? Let's look at the case of climate change. Climate change is a multi-trillion dollar problem. With global temperatures rising, along with the changing weather patterns, sea level rise, increases in droughts and floods, the world's most vulnerable populations are facing ever-increasing risks, food insecurity, and have fewer chances to break out of poverty and build better lives. In fact, the UN estimates that climate change could drive an additional 100 million people into poverty by 2030. It's overwhelmingly accepted that climate change is a very significant threat to humanity. Transitioning to clean energy can solve the problem of climate change, but this requires huge investments globally. Several years ago, developed nations committed to produce $100 billion per year by 2020 in support of climate change in developing countries. This again in comparison to the military budgets of developed nations is very small. The report suggests that this target is not met. Even though the trajectory still remains rising, but the gaps in financial priorities remain huge. If we don't tackle this problem head on, it's going to cost us much more down the road. Nuclear fusion is a scientific endeavor when achieved can produce clean energy that can solve the problem of climate change by shifting our energy dependency. This is worth the hard work, yet the funding for its research and development is not up to the mark. This is disappointing because many years have been passed since the research of nuclear reactors and its working began. Yet, it did not get the support it required. People think that space agencies waste so much money on space exploration. But the data reveals that every space agency receives funding from the government from its annual budget. NASA receives less than 0.5% of annual budget from the US government, while space agencies of every other major nation receives a funding less than 0.4% from their annual budget. Imagine how far we have come as a society thanks to all the cool science stuff we have figured out. A big part of this progress is because of basic research. But here's the thing, if we suddenly stop supporting this kind of research, we might miss out on solving big puzzles. Sometimes we find quick answers that make life better and that's awesome. But guess what? The real magic often happens when we are patient. 
Babies explore everything without worrying about anything. They are like little scientists just doing their thing. And you know what? We are a lot like those curious babies. We want to explore the stars and learn all we can about the universe. The money we put into learning and exploring isn't just about numbers. It's about making our future awesome. The universe is like a giant playground of mysteries. We are always curious, always asking questions. It's like a never-ending adventure with each discovery as a new chapter. And the best part, someday we might finally understand why we are here and what all this is about. Imagine then, the meaning of life could totally change. 